This engraving is one of the series of four circular diagrams from Henry Kunrad's Amphitheater of Eternal Wisdom, which was first published in a small edition in 1595 and later in an extended format in 1609. This emblem has a considerable amount of text engraved on it, which explains and contextualizes the symbols. Around the circumference, the Latin text states, the macrocosm, the highest good, which is nature, the gift of the triune God Jehovah, the Catholicon or universal panacea is restored through the art. By man, the simplicity of the monad is restored. By the triune hermaphroditic universal sun from the greater world, the triune Catholicon is restored to its use and intended purpose. At the very top of the emblem, we see the letters Aleph Shin, the divine fire, Aesh. This is the spiritual fire behind the sun, high in the heavens. Below this, the heaven of fixed stars is indicated, and below, again, are the clouds. On these clouds is written, The philosopher's stone, the miracle of nature made by artificial aid, the universal elixir, the quintessence glorified in its own body, the invisible salt, the incombustible oil, the soap of the wise, the holy universal earth of the theosophists, in which is found the tree of life, the tabernacle and the house of the Lord. At the centre of the clouds is a little triangle within which is the word Elohim, God in his creative form. In the space below the clouds we have the sentence, from these two you shall compose the universal triune fountain of nature, first from the viscous abyss the great, universal, triune, glutinous, oily sea, and second from the salt, impregnated with the universal spark of the quintessence. On the left, the ethereal spirit, heaven, the seat of the soul, in whose interior pure fire is found. This is our sulphur uniting like matters and separating those which are unalike. This is also air, fine and pure, the universal mercury, the clearest dew of heaven, the virgin's milk, carefully prepared from salt and sulphur by quick, frequent, hourly drying. It is a warming fluid and slippery substance, a rarefying mixture, imparting energy and motion and making the whole process easy. On the right we have the glutinous water of the white eagle, the fountain spring for our universal king. This is the earthly magnet attracting the heavenly so that the higher may mingle and unite with the lower. It is the womb or belly of the greater world in which the breath of the Lord in the midst of heaven was conceived and made flesh, and was again conceived, made tangible, and reborn in his regenerative, physical, chemical manifestation by means of the heavenly spirit, that is heaven, the seat of the soul. It is the seat of the woman Bea, the spittle of the moon, and the lunar juice. Let us now strip away much of this text to see the underlying structure of symbolism. We now see seven symbols arranged on the vertical axis, from the divine fire at the top to the dark chaos at the very bottom of the image. In the centre of the series of symbols, we see the hermaphrodite. Above the hermaphrodite are three symbols, the divine fire, the triangle with the Elohim, and further down, the Azot bird. Below the hermaphrodite are three other symbols, 
at the lowest is the sphere of chaos, then above that the familiar globe of the earth, and above that the world renewed. On the breast of the bird is the word Azot, with the letter O being transformed into the sign of Mercury. On its wings is the label the bird of Hermes. Its tail feathers have the phrases I sit and hatch everything, the quintessence of nature, the soul of the world. A little banner running up from its breast and curving around its head states blessed greenness. Around the head of the central hermaphrodite is the phrase a permanent glutinous and fatty moisture, the virgin's milk. On its neck is a necklace with conjoin, while on the top middle of the breast is the word fix. Its right arm has dissolve, while its left has coagulate. On its chest is the word rabis, indicating it is two things in one body. Its body has the three alchemical principles, mercury at its navel, sulphur on its right breast, and salt on its left nipple. From these two breasts emerge streams of liquid. From the sulphur nipple comes a stream labelled the blood of the lion, poured out from the east. The flying dragon that does not die without its brother, proudly calling I eat you up. From the salt nipple comes a stream labelled the gluten of the eagle poured out from the west. The dragon's sister boldly replying I eat you in turn. Within this restored world is a square with the four elements at the top, bottom, left and right. They are associated with other alchemical principles fire with a materia prima, air with chaos, water with magnesia, and the stone with the earth element. Within this square is a triangle, the vertices of which are the three principles, sulphur at the top, salt at the right hand of the hermaphrodite, and mercury on the left. The right side of this triangle, again from the viewpoint of the hermaphrodite, is further associated with the active principle while the left is passive. The sides of the triangle are labelled spirit dissolve, soul separate and body purify. At its centre is the word Yah, the name of God and the exhortation to extract. Thus for Kunrath God stands at the top, the outer periphery and also at the very centre of the work. The sphere of chaos bears some text which we can read from the centre outwards. Chaos, the first created, triune and universal. The threefold darkness living in the abyss. Heaven and earth, emptiness and water. The form of the Elohim brooded on the waters. We can thus see how the hermaphrodite stands at the centre of this diagram, uniting the horizontal polarities, left and right, male and female aspects, and also the vertical polarities of the above and below, spirit and matter. It also links together the three principles and the four elements. The larger blocks of text on the left and right are perhaps too lengthy to quote here in total, but in summary they each amplify and give extra detail concerning the solar and lunar facets of the alchemical work. Thus the text on the left describes the priceless water of life that is a burning watery fire and the volatile part of the stone that dissolves substances better than corrosive waters of fire. It is a strong vinegar and sal ammoniac of the wise. It is the blood of the earth, red, transparent and clear. It is the purified Adam, the proper king, the solar seed of the man Gabricius, 
It is the philosopher's bronze and potable gold, a mercury seven times distilled. On the right, the universal virgin earth is described. It is a dry, foliated, fixed part of the stone that congeals, coagulates and penetrates. It is the salt of the earth, the universal remedy that makes barren things fruitful. It is the dry water that does not wet the hands, the white laton, the universal tartar of the universal wine. It is the purified Eve, the beautiful queen Bea, the shining moon and true lunar silver, the most secret Saturn of the philosophers. This emblem is so well thought out and constructed that at the point in the text referring to the moon, we see in the clouds bordering the text the image of the moon itself. This emblem is centred on the image of the hermaphrodite who faces out towards us. Consequently, many of the associations, left and right, passive and active, are reversed from our perspective. It is instructive to place ourselves in the situation of the hermaphrodite so that the symbols are correctly associated to our left and right sides.